Welcome back again. Today I'm doing the last room in the intro to web hacking part of the junior penetration tester pathway. The room name is command injection and in this room we will learn about the different ways to execute system commands starting from an interface on a web application. So basically in this room you have one practical challenge. You will, in this practical challenge you will deploy the machine access the IP address and once you deploy the machine you will see the interface right here so in this website we have a small input box in this input box the web application expects us to type an IP address right now the IP address will be um, pinged right will be pinged by the system to ensure or to make sure that it is available or to see whether it is available or not so for example if we type the expected input here which is an IP address let's type the local host so now the application will perform a ping on the IP now how do we know that it is ping we judge the, that by looking at the output so we see the output is saying ping and here is the IP address and this is a typical ping output okay so now we know how the application works um, and we know that the application is performing a system command okay so that opens the opportunity to perform other system commands but how do you do that now if you get back to the room the author has done a great job in demonstrating the uh, or showing how the vulnerable code looks like so if you look at this example here you see at the first step you have you know um, a variable holding the directory and then the second step you have another variable that um, holds the value input by the user okay now then as you can see in the third step a command is being executed the command is grep and it's using the input received by the user in the variable title okay and this is the path of the file now the problem is the input received by the user and stored in the title variable is not being filtered or there is no input validation there is no any kind of check on that input and it is being used directly in a system command which is grip that's one way we knew that there is a possibility of command injection now command injection can be conducted in many ways so there are specific payloads that you can use to test whether you have command injection in the application. So if I go to the notes and if I scroll down to the section where it says command injection, okay. So, so regularly the formula is you have the expected input. In our case, it is the IP address, right? and from the output we see this is some sort of it is not blind output right sometimes you would enter the input and you want to receive any output which means uh, the interaction here is blind but the interaction now with the application is kind of verbose because the output is being returned okay now the output being returned back to the client is a helpful way or is helpful for the attacker to execute system commands and understand more about the hierarchy of the application. Now, since we know that there is a ping command from the output, what we can do here, we can follow this formula. So expected the output, and we can use the semicolon or double ampersand or one ampersand followed by our payload. So why the uh, semicolon or the double ampersand here? We use that to just execute another system command. So basically when the system executes the first command, it will then jump to the next um, command and execute it. That's why we use double ampersand or one or semicolon to execute two system commands at once. Okay, now, since, as I said earlier, since the output is being returned back to us, it's gonna be helpful in determining what's happening, all right, or in determining whether the application is actually vulnerable. So how to test if that application is vulnerable to command injection. So first we enter the expected input, and then we follow that by 
as another system command. Now, if the system is vulnerable, it will execute both commands. And we knew that there is command injection vulnerability. Execute. Now again, I see the output of the ping command. And starting from here, I see the output of the ID command, which returns the current ID of the current user. In our case, it's data, the uh, ID of the web server. Now here we know that the application is vulnerable to command injection. And now we can proceed and perform various uh, commands on the system, among which is receiving or catching a reverse shot. Now, you may be asking me, how can we just prevent these kind of attacks? So basically, if you go back to the room, again, the author has done a great job in outlining how you can prevent this. So one of the ways is, as you can see, we have, this is form here, and we have an input taken by the user. The input is text. Um, here is the name and the ID, and here we have pattern. The pattern is numbers, only digits from zero to nine, which means, if the user tries to input something other than numbers from 0 to 9, the application will just reject the input. As you can see, after verifying that the input adheres to specific criteria, then the, uh, the web application is using the input taken by the user in a system command. Okay. In the previous case, there was no check here. The input is taken directly, which is the case here. Whatever I type, is taken directly and executed. Now that's the problem. Now here's another way, uh, one way here. The other, the other way is using some sort of filter input. The filter input is a function in PHP that filters the input. So you have to do some sort of input validation using PHP functions to validate the input or you can just use patterns to make sure that the input taken by the user is adhered to specific criteria. Let's go back to the offensive side now. Now, how can we take this further? I'm sure most of you will not just sit around and uh, be enough of taking the ID, right? So we can do something more. Like, for example, we can output the content of sensitive files. So password, output the content of etc password. So we can see here the users we have um, let's take a look. So this is the output. And from here we can see the users. Also we can output the etc shadow. Let's try that. If we can do that, we can just take uh, or we can just crack the user. As you can see, permission denied. We can't view the content of the etc shadow. One reason for that is the user data cannot or doesn't have permissions over this file. That doesn't have permissions to read this file. That's why it didn't work. Now, you won't waste your time. You, what are you going to do now? You're going to go back to your terminal, open up a new terminal, and just type sudo rl wrap nc, open up a listener. Now, I open the listener. Go back there. Craft a command, say nc, and then type in the IP address of your machine, followed by the port. Now here you are instructing the system to, to ping the IP and then execute another command, which is here. Execute, you will receive a reverse shot. You will catch it. As you can see, I have the connection catched by machine now. Now, that's the ultimate uh, objective of any command injection attack. Now. Let's go back to the questions, see if there are any questions. So, what user is this application running as? We saw it is dubdub data. What are the contents of the flag located at home? Try hack me flag. You can get the content either by navigating through the system in the reverse shell here, or you can just do it here. So, let me stop this one. Go back here and then type in that that's how we display the flag
Oh, so it didn't work. Why? Let's look at that. Oh, we have the question mark. We shouldn't have put the question mark. Okay, and we can see we have just up the, con the content of the flag. Now that is the room in a s very simple way. So questions here, what is the term of the process or for the process of a cleaning user input that is provided to that application is the process name is sanitization. Any other questions? So these are some sort, you can read through these, but the most importantly is to understand the practical part. Now that is all today for today. It was simple, short. In the next video, I'm gonna go back. Let's see what we're gonna do in the next video. We go back to the pathway, see where we are. So in the next video, I'm gonna complete all of these rooms in one video. So this will finish the perp suite. The only thing left is the network security. And the network security, you can go over passive and active reconnaissance. They are very easy. Just complete them, read through them. There are about tools to use for passive and active reconnaissance. Ping, tracer out, telnet, simple stuff. Now for the end map, uh, I'm gonna also do one room. Basically for the end map, you can also go over these rooms by yourself. I have many videos about the basics of end map. You can get back to them to help you answer or get back answer to these questions. Protocols and servers also very easy. You can go over them yourself. Now lastly, the last video I'm going to do about this pathway is the network security challenge. Let's see what we have here. So we have a challenge where we will use some network security tools. Okay, so two videos to finish this pathway. As I said earlier, one for perp suite and the other one for the network security challenge. So that is for today. See you in the next video.